In any game with the selection of characters, it's inevitable for one to have the dishonor of being the quote-unquote worst in the game. Whether you're playing a fighting game like Smash Bros, a turn-based RPG like Pokemon, or a trading card game like Yu-Gi-Oh, one or a handful of members within this lineup is bound to be slapped dead last. For its predecessor Genshin, the jury is still out on who might truly be considered the worst character in the game, although for my money, I'd bet it on either Hydro Traveler or Aloy. Starl, however, was rather quick to single out their black sheep. Almost immediately after the game was released, Arlen was considered the single worst unit in the entire game, not just failing to find gainful employment in any niche whatsoever, but on multiple occasions having the lowest representation, at least according to what data that could be found on player usage. Honestly, it would have made more sense to start this series with him instead of Herdo last year, but we're here now. For today, we'll be discussing the factors that led to no one playing Arlen and what could potentially be done to change that. Staros 4-star units have managed to find somewhat more favorable conditions compared to Genshin's. While the latter's environment is more difficult for 4-stars to find meaningful representation, both as a result of the Power 5 gatekeeping the vast majority of them and the notion that 5-stars are just that powerful, the former has made a more concerted effort to level the playing field, keeping the disparity between 5 and 4-stars within a range to where the inferior rarity can still be more than competitive and worth investing into. Sadly, however, if there's one thing that did carry over from Genshin, it's that primary damage dealers are still dealt a losing hand, having a significantly lower stat line than their 5-star counterparts and offering little if any means of supporting the team, especially given Starrell's turn-based landscape. The only way for a main DPS 4-star to be successful is if they quite literally have the same numbers as a 5-star, as evident by our beloved Gamba Qingche, who for all intents and purposes can reach damage numbers on par with some of the game's finest, albeit with no shortage of molding, resetting, and maybe some copium on the side. Circumstantially, Arlen had to fight a massive uphill battle from day one. Before even discussing his gameplay, we should talk about the first reason no one plays him, that frankly has nothing to do with said gameplay. Some people forget he's even a character to begin with. Despite serving as the head of security for her to space station, he's an entirely forgettable character. Beyond the initial tutorial and the brief cutscene you have with being introduced to Skrillum, people have an easier time remembering Asta's dog Peppy than the person Peppy typically spends the most time with. While I try to focus more on gameplay defects and whatnot for this series, presence does play a huge role. Being an anime game further reinforces this. Take Ting Yun, for instance. On top of being extremely effective in combat, with how involved she is in the Xianzhou storyline and bonus points for being marketably attractive, players are willing to gravitate more towards her than someone you barely see in the story like Bailu. To some extent, attachment and character appeal serve as an amplifier to a character's representation. If they're strong but not the most memorable, they might be used, but a character who's strong and popular will be used all the more so. Arlen has neither. This isn't even my personal bias. Arlen quite frankly has some of the least presence in Starro. If he was a strong character, that wouldn't be much of a problem, but because he's so weak, the only way he could have seen usage is if he has a cult following, and to my knowledge, he doesn't. So why is he so weak? Three words. Not good enough. Arlen's kit is just not good enough. His entire gameplay revolves around the core essence of destruction, dealing a lot of damage and taking a lot of damage. Most of you should know by now that destruction units tend to lean into sacrificing health to increase their damage with units like Blade and Jinglio spearheading that notion. They also serve as the jack of all trades archetype. While Hunt specializes in single target and erudition in multi target, destruction units can do a mixture of both, making them good for general combat and for a time, the most effective of the 3 DPS paths. Arlen's gameplay epitomizes the idea of self damage. His whole shtick is that he deals more damage the lower his health bar is. Theoretically, the closer he is to death, the faster he can bring his opponents to death as well, making for a high-risk, high-reward experience that actually has a ton of potential. 4-star units naturally should be weaker than 5-stars on account of their lesser rarity. However, they can and should be allowed to match 5-stars in some capacity, as long as it's through either harsher conditions or in a specific niche. For example, Ting Yun is practically 5-star level in performance, but she's restricted to only a single character, whereas someone like Ren Mei can buff her entire team. Qingchai can reach ludicrous amounts of damage thanks to her skill and talent, but the investment floor on her is significantly higher as you'll need either a ton of skill points, a ton of battery, a ton of RNGesus, or ideally all of the above. One would assume Arlen's gimmick of dealing monstrous amounts of damage in exchange for being dangerously close to death himself would be another way they can make a 4-star character strong, and that's a perfectly reasonable conclusion to make. You have DPS that rivals even 5-star damage dealers, but you're also one foot in the grave, so strong gust of wind can screw over all chances of victory. Like I said, it's a high risk, high reward premise. The problem is that Arlen nets a high risk, but low reward. His damage is just not good enough. His skill consumes 15% of his maximum health to damage a single enemy for 240% attack. A decent modifier, but not that much better than most others. His ultimate is also just a single instance of damage with no additional effect, capping out at 320% to a single enemy with half of that dished out to adjacent ones. 320 is actually pretty solid all things considered, but base numbers never illustrate the full picture. 
you have to look at the ways in which they can amplify said damage. In Arlen's case, his talent. The lower his HP is, the more damage he does. If he's at 28% or less, he deals up to 72% more damage from all his attacks and abilities. This kind of damage boost may appear substantial on paper, but in practice, trying to get to this point is easier said than done. The biggest concern with Arlen's talent is that at the current moment, he has no easy and more importantly safe way to drain his HP. You can only do so with a skill depleting 15% per cast, which means for you to reach that 20% threshold, you would have to use the skill 5 times. That's just too long for a damage dealer, especially for a damage dealer with an underwhelming payoff. While this isn't exactly a fair comparison, let's take a look at Jing Liu. If you use a technique beforehand in one cast of her skill, she automatically reaches her empowered state, letting her wreak havoc on everything by the first turn since entering that empowered state lets her act again. Even if you run a super turn refresh team like Branya and Sparkle, Arlen will still take 2 or 3 turns to get down to that state. This also has the unfortunate problem of you never being able to use teleport anchors. In Genshin, statues have a long animation that plays out before you receive a heal, giving you the opportunity to run away from them before that happens for all you Hu Tao mains out there who know exactly what I'm talking about. Although in the case of Hu Tao, she can use her skill a few times before entering the fight anyway. Teleport Angers instantly regenerate your health if you so much as get close to them. If that ever happens, you have to bring Arlen's HP back down all over again. Adding on to that in Simulated Universe, Soren Disaster, and Golden Gears, it's almost not worth hitting those Technique Point capsules, especially if they're right next to healing ones because that comes at the detriment of Arlen's DPS. Most 5 stars techniques serve as a means of early access. Jing Liu gets a stack of Syzygy with hers, Lunai Danhang gets one free stack of his basic attack empowerment, Renmei and Fushuan get a free activation of their respective skills. It would be really convenient if Arlen's technique automatically dropped his HP to half or something so he only needs one cast of his skill to get going, but all his technique does is deal damage to all enemies upon entering battle, and not really a relevant amount at that. This means the single only way for you to get his health down is to spam his skill over and over again until you reach that point, as trying to do so by intentionally taking hits from enemies is too unsustainable, namely towards the end game where you practically get one shot in if you don't have a tank like Wu Xuan or Japart. Therein lies another issue with Arlen, similarly to Yan Qing. With the way Arlen's kit was designed, shields are explicitly the only form of defense you can use for him. Healers are counterproductive for Arlen as they will always overheal him, consequently reducing his damage. You also can't bring Fushuan either. Because of his skill, Arlen's HP will be reduced to 1 if he doesn't have sufficient health, meaning he still dies even with Fushuan's cover ability, as the latter can only redirect 2 thirds of the damage her teammates would take to herself. Naturally, you'll want to keep using his skill even after he reaches 28% health or lower since it does a fair bit of damage. But, that's why you can only use shields to protect him. You can't heal him at all in light of virtually all healing sources intending to fully restore whoever they're being cast on, and you can't rely on cover tanking either in light of him literally being close to death anyway. An argument can be made for Fushuan alongside Arlen in that a small amount of healing whenever using her ultimate is enough to recover him without compromising damage, but Arlen actually has the lowest base defense in the entire game. Ironic, considering he's your archetypal berserker character, and berserkers are supposed to have great survivability, especially at low HP. There is nothing in Arlen's kit that grants him more resilience. For instance, a passive like when below 30% health, Arlen takes half damage from all sources would be really convenient to have, but instead he just gets more damage and debuff resistance, neither of which lend themselves to his survivability. Once again, towards the end game, you can reasonably expect your party members to sustain a third of their health or more versus a powerful enemy attack, even through Fushuan. For Arlen, given his defense or lack thereof, that's going to be about half his HP. In other words, Fushuan's cover just won't be enough for him. To make matters worse, he has no guaranteed way to sustain himself. His A2 trace lets him recover 20% HP if he's below 30, but that's only upon defeating an enemy. It's not on demand, like how Blade sets his HP to half with his ultimate. So you have to assume that Arlen's at 1 HP for the entirety of a fight. At present, this makes Japard and now Aventurine the only two viable defensive choices for him. In Arlen's defense, Aventurine definitely changes things up for him, but at the same time, Aventurine changes things up for a huge portion of the cast. You would make much better use of our new shield here with, frankly, anyone other than Arlen for the sheer fact that Arlen's just not good enough. Even if you manage to overcome all these conditions, Arlen's damage ceiling isn't much to write home about. Beta testers, bear with me, I'll get to you in just a sec. The destruction category is already incredibly stacked with the holy trinity of Blade, Jing Liu, Lunai, Dan Hung. Speaking of Blade, if Jing Liu is everything Yan Qing wishes he was, then Blade is everything Arlen wishes he was. Blade has more damage, more consistency, an HP drain to damage conversion that allows him to be at full HP so he doesn't get exploded, 
Better ceiling thanks to having the power budget of a 5 star and even a way for him to behave like a sub DPS thanks to his talent giving him great synergy with Jingliu. Blade can be summed up as DLC Arlen, like the free trial version versus the paid version. So not only does Arlen have some of the most unforgiving conditions in the game, but there's someone else who is essentially him but 10 times easier to use and more rewarding, giving players absolutely zero reason to use him unless they personally like him but as we've discussed earlier, Arlen is one of the least memorable characters in the Star Royale universe. The frustrating thing is that he wasn't always like this. Back in the beta version, he actually was a high risk high reward character. To give you a brief rundown of what changed between the final close beta and live release, Arlen's skill used to cap out at 320% damage at rank 10 compared to his current 240. That's ultimate levels of damage on a skill. Additionally, his talent capped out at 80% instead of 72, and believe me when I say that small bit mattered a lot. If not for those nerfs, Arlen would have been a very respectable budget damage deal, assuming you had your part of course. He still wouldn't have been Qingchai levels of good, but certainly far from the worst character in the game. Furthermore, his ult E4 had no turn limit. Arlen's 4th Eidolon gives him 1 instance of death immunity, restoring his HP to 25% if at any point he takes fatal damage, and he can do this once per battle. This Eidolon alone is a huge upgrade for the character. There's just one issue, after 2 turn cycles, he loses this property, which makes no sense whatsoever. There is no scenario where you should be getting killed in the first 2 turns, because if there is, you're doing something horribly wrong. You might say, oh, you can spend the first 2 turns intentionally sacking Arlen to get him to 25% instead of spamming his skill. But again, why should you have to do that to make the character work? E4 should be an insurance policy, not an excuse to intend feed. What's more confusing is that his A6 trace grants him a barrier if he enters a fight below half health, making his E4 effectively useless. In the beta, that 2 turn window wasn't a thing, it would be in effect for the entirety of the fight until activated. So in the past, Arlen was a half decent unit that apparently had to get nerfed for reasons known only to the almighty and the devs at Hoyo. As it stands, Arlen's one of the worst characters in the game. Between him and Yan Qing, I would say Yan Qing slightly edges out only due to being a 5 star, but the two struggle with the exact same issues just in different ways. They take too much work for not enough gain. Aside from reverting the nurse to Arlen, I think one thing they could do to make it feel less suffocating to play is to add more quality of life. His damage was never the problem, it was getting to that damage and keeping it. So if Hoyo ever decides to buff characters, here's my suggestion. Have it so Arlen's skill can be stacked on top of itself, as in you can consume 15, 30, 45, 60, 75% HP and proportionally increase the damage of the skill. That would not only give him more burst, but also help him get to low HP faster if he starts the fight at full. Obviously the skill damage needs to have diminishing returns, since if he stacked his skill 5 times in one turn, that's over 1000% damage, making him even stronger than Qingchen. So we can make it so you can consume as much HP as you want, but you can only cap out at maybe 500%. Really, the main point of this is to deplete his HP faster. Secondly, have so as A6 activates the moment he drops to half health so he can enter a battle above half HP and still get one use of that barrier. For the sake of balance, you can make it so this activates only once per battle. I feel like the activation requirement of being at 50% or less health upon entering battle is too restrictive, as there's no way to hurt yourself in the overworld like you can in Genshin. Those two changes alone would address both how long it takes him to get to prime position and how squishy he is once he does get there. In any case, Arlen definitely got shafted. Why? Who knows? It's a shame too, he has a really fun gameplay experience in my opinion. But the terrible execution of it and the nerfs that he was unjustifiably given killed any chances of him seeing meta relevance. That's why no one plays Arlen. What do you guys think about the guy? Do you think there's a possibility he can make a comeback in his current state, or do you agree that the only way he can is if he's directly buffed? Let me know in the comments down below. For now, if you enjoyed the video, I encourage you to leave a like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Varsfarm, join my Discord server, and check out my other Why No One Plays videos if you haven't yet. But till next time, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.